Hello, and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Trying out a new segment here on our channel based on the fact that I recently came across a whole stack of books from my childhood that I didn't think I left at my parents. Rereading through them was a lot of fun, and I thought maybe you guys would like to share that experience with me. So this will be me reading children's picture books. Yes, they do have words. Sorry you don't get to see all the pictures with uh, some commentary, mostly from myself, occasionally from Lux, in order to make sure that this falls under fair use. Today's reading is from the Little Golden Book series, not one that I've seen around very commonly. It's called Pantaloon, and it's about a dog. And to give full proper credit, written by Katherine Jackson, and the pictures are done by Leonard Weisgard. One morning, Pantaloon hopped on his shiny red bicycle and headed straight for the baker's shop. Oh my, he said to himself, I never can get enough of those delicious baked and iced things. See, this is where it's important that I tell you that the story is about a dog, because who jumped on the bicycle is a black poodle. Now at that moment, the baker, who looked like a jolly round potato, I didn't know potatoes could look jolly, was making a list of things he had to bake that morning. Pies and cakes with strawberry icing, gingerbread men with sugar and spicing, 12 wedding cakes with lots of layers, nine birthday cakes, and chocolate eclairs. There goes my diet. <laughs> Sounds lovely, cried the baker, but I'll never be finished by noon unless I have some help. Now with your love of books, I don't think that's you that wrote in this page. No, this, as you could probably tell by the condition, was purchased used, specifically from the local library. So he put a sign in the window that said, Help Wanted. When Pantaloon saw that sign, he fairly flew into the shop. I'm a helper, he said, licking his lips. Oh no, Pantaloon, said the baker. You look to me as if you'd eat more than you'd bake. He opened the door very wide and said, Goodbye, Pantaloon. Aren't Pantaloon pants? Yes. Okay. Which the dog is not wearing any, by the way, but he does have a red bow. Then, since he was later than ever, the baker began at once to mix and beat and bake. Before long, another helper came tripping into his shop. This one seemed to be a very nice old lady in a big bonnet and a blue shawl lovely pink hat in the photo. Mm -hmm. I'm a lovely cook, she said, and I never eat between meals. Then you're the helper for me, laughed the baker, so happy that he danced the old lady round and round his shop. I see where this is going. Well, yeah, you can see the photos. Pictures, I should say. But her shawl caught on the counter and her bonnet bounced off her head. And this wasn't a nice old lady at all. It's Pantaloon, cried the baker, throwing up his hands. Goodbye, gulped Pantaloon. He leaped on his bicycle and hurried along to the barber shop. Really? Uh, huh. But all the time he was being clipped and combed and curled, he was trying to think up a new plan for getting to be a helper in that bakery shop. After a great hustle and bustle, the baker was ready to ice his cakes. He opened his sugar bin, and it was empty, right down to the bottom. No sugar! Away he ran in his going-to-market hat. I don't understand why he needed the hat, but okay. Then back he came, carrying such a large bag of sugar that he never saw Pantaloon's bicycle, which had somehow rolled in front of his door. Hey, oops. That was my line. Oops, cried the baker, and down he came, sugar and hat and all, in a heap. Weech. When Pantaloon saw what had happened, he wanted to hide under the barber's chair, but he ran bravely out and helped the angry, bruised, and bumped baker into his bed. Don't worry about a thing, he called. Then he mixed the icing, iced the cakes, loaded everything into the baker's truck, and delivered all the cakes and cookies in the nick of time. I didn't know he had a license. Also, he's a bit hairy to be doing stuff like that. There's probably health rules against this. People were delighted to have their pies and cakes and cookies brought to them by such a prompt poodle. So, obviously not. Uh, obviously. 
Are you the baker's new helper? they asked. Maybe I am, grinned Pantaloon happily. But on the way back, he remembered it was his bicycle that caused all the trouble. Oh me, he cried. I'll never dare show my face in the baker's shop again. So he parked the truck and went home. Hope he returned the keys. I hope. Before long, the baker was back in his shop. He mixed and baked and iced more busily than ever, because now he had more customers than ever. Why, where's Pantaloon, they asked. And they said, how you must miss him. Well, my goodness, said the baker, very much surprised. Well, I do miss Pantaloon, and what do you know about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, up to this point, he's been a pest. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, Pantaloon was playing his guitar and was singing. So he can bake, drive a truck, and play guitar. He's a very helpful poodle. Very talented poodle. What care I for cakes with layers, or gingerbread men, or chocolate eclairs? That's him singing. Uh, we're not going to do the singing. He tried on all his hats, and he pretended that each one looked much finer than a baker's tall white hat. But he didn't fool himself one bit. I don't know, I think the top hat looks pretty nice. He looks very dapper. It's no use, said Pantaloon at last. He still wanted more than anything to be a baker. Which is not what he said on the first page. He said he couldn't get enough of the sweets. Yeah. Meanwhile, the baker was looking all over town for Pantaloon. Everyone said, no, I haven't seen him. And the baker went sadly back to his shop. He put on his tall white hat. And suddenly, he had such a splendid idea that he grinned a wide grin and began to bake the biggest, roundest, most beautiful cake ever. Now Pantaloon was in his bathtub, scrubbing his back with a long-handled brush. This is a children's book, right? And we're having a bath scene. Well, it's not that bad, and he's a dog, so... Just saying. Yep. Yeah. Through the window came the beautiful smell of that beautiful cake. In a wink, Pantaloon was out of his bath. He hurried down the street, holding a big green umbrella in front of him. This way, he said, I can see the baker's shop, and the baker can't see me. Oh, so intelligent. I mean, he does everything else, but not so good with his plans. And he stopped in front of the window. That wonderful shop looked even more wonderful. It was filled with pies and cakes with all kinds of icing, gingerbread men with sugar and spicing, and wedding cakes with lots of layers, and birthday cakes, and chocolate eclairs. And right in the very middle of the window, tipped forward so you could read the letters, was a beautiful, big, and round cake that said, Please, Pantaloon, come back. Here I am, laughed Pantaloon, bursting into the shop. Never thinks that might be a trick. <laughs> come back and get in trouble. At last, cried the baker, he put a tall white hat on Pantaloon's head and sliced the cake. Then side by side, the two sat in the window, eating and laughing and chatting away. The two happiest bakers in the whole world. Hmm. So, what'd you think reading through that again? <laughs> uh, a lot of children's books do that bit of repetition and rhyming. Oh, Dr. Seuss was known very much for rhyming. And mm -hmm. children's books do a lot of repetition. But it's just kind of fun to say pies and cakes with strawberry icing, gingerbread men with sugar and spicing, 12 wedding cakes with lots of layers, nine birthday cakes, and chocolate eclairs. Yeah, I really like the way you read that. <laughs> well, hopefully everyone else enjoyed the way I read this. So yep. th this was our first foray into the world of books. I do have a lot of other children's books. I wanted to start with this one because it does not have a sequel. Many of my short children's picture books do have sequels. Just to give you a preview, a variety of books from the Serendipity line, which includes Flutterby and Morgan, if anyone knows those names. Also, a whole bunch of books about Whisper, the winged unicorn, back when they were called winged unicorns and not alicorns. Yeah, because alicorn is actually a term for the horn not the actual creature. Yes, but the definition of words can change. So don't go wondering why it's called Whisper the Winged Unicorn and not Whisper the Alicorn, because that's why. Hope you've enjoyed this premiere episode of Ember's Reading Room. If you did, please consider sharing it with friends and family. Also, you can check out some other videos on our channel. 
none of them are reading books right now, but we do cover a variety of items and hopefully you will find them interesting. If you would like to help support this channel, you can start by clicking the subscribe button. You can also check out our pages on Patreon and Coffee under Luxbrush. Also, specifically for Ember's Reading Room, since we are covering books, we will try to put a Amazon link to the books if they are available in print. Please look below for that. Also, since this is Ember's Reading Room and not Lux Brush and Ember, we are adding one of my referral links, which is for a company called Ebates. Clicking on the link does not obligate you to spend any money. However, if you do click the link, sign up and make a qualifying purchase, you will get a reward and I will get a reward. So if you like to shop, that might be the thing for you. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of Ember's Reading Room or any content on our channel.